Darlings, welcome back to my channel. It's Winnie BLV, Mouth of the South. No intro, no outro. It's just this hoe. Hope you're having a fabulous, fabulous day. Um, before we go any further with this video, you are going to hear some heavy, heavy machinery. Not the fun kind like I have locked up in my bedroom. <laughs> just kidding. It's laying out in the open. No, heavy machinery from my neighbor who is putting in a pool and that will annoy you and I apologize ahead of time. But this video, girl, this video right here is to talk about my one year later post-surgical procedure of the breast reduction. How I'm doing one year after. The things I wish I had talked about earlier or known or done. Um, that video steadily does get views, more and more views. I think when I first posted it, I got around 1,200. It's doubled that now because I think that... There is kind of a gap um, when you search out the top videos that show up for breast reduction surgeries and stuff like that. I kept getting a lot of the um, younger girls doing it, um, a lot of little bitty gals, but it, there, to me it felt like there was kind of a gap. There wasn't a whole, whole lot of us older ladies over 50 talking about it, and we still are among the gals who have it done. Um, me, the reason, I'll just reiterate why I did it. I had very bad um, neck pains and problems and, of course, back issues. And so the doctor that I chose was able to get that covered on my insurance for medical purposes. So I was very, very glad. I was, um, just to give you a frame of reference, I was uh, an F cup i would shove them into um i tried to shove them in you know how you do that thing where you let the bottoms out um i was trying to shove myself into a triple d um but but yeah if i could classify what cup i was it was actually what the doctor classifies as an f i am now a full c <laughs> Um, I feel like the first notable thing from coming home and seeing my new breasts, um, I felt like when I saw them, they were here. And I know that's crazy. They're, they weren't there, but that's what it felt like because I had had them, you know, down here, way down here, like on my belly for so long. Um, I just had no clue what, you know, where, <laughs> where they were, I don't guess... I guess they were supposed to be as opposed to where they actually had fallen to. So that was the first notable thing that I can remember. Um, the pain, it just was not. Um, so if you watched my first video, and I will link it somewhere above and also down in the description box, into my box, girl. As I said in the first video, I did not find it to be um, pleasant, easy, uh, agreeable, any of those things. I did not enjoy it. It was not fun times for me. I had sort of a hard time. I still have a huge scar on my right breast going right down the middle because I had, remember, the anchor scars, and then I had the sides under my arms done um, lipoed. And so I still have scarring. Um, unfortunately, now this one, this side, the left, she did, you can't even tell. The only thing that you can see under here and around my nipple, the there's a little bit of scarring. But I'm telling you, this is all just looks like I grew the skin. It, there's no signs of anything. It healed up that well. This girl, however, she's been naughty. She did not heal. I had trouble with her. I had a huge wound that did not heal for months. Um, now it's healed, but I have a really like a, about a half inch scar that sort of zigzags down the middle from my nipple, which is now inverted. This one is, this one is not, she's perfect. Everything about her, she's the perfect child, her sister, she's being a little biatch. Uh, actually she just, she did not heal upright. There were problems, um, Something that I wish I had listened to and done, the doctor's wife, who was also his recovering, or his nurse, not recovery nurse, but nurse, um, and she sort of goes into all the consults, she tells you all the information, all the care that you need to have, yada, yada, yada. Every time they would check me, 
after I had the surgery, she was concerned. She, she was very much like, you know, maybe we should send her to wound care. Maybe she needs to follow up with a wound care specialist. And, and he would always, you know, he kind of little lady us. you guys know what that is? Oh, you're going to be fine, little lady. Guys know what's best for you. You know, he kind of did that thing. And I wish because it's my own health and you should push for your own health, uh, you should always go with your gut and do what you think is best. I regret not going to the wound care specialist on my own or even pressing him more because every single time, about the, I would say, maybe six week, at the six week mark, um, he did look at it and say, oh, that thing can do nothing but heal now. And I'm thinking, oh, yes, yeah, six weeks later? <laughs> like, what? And so I do have... Um, a very hard on the scar itself like a hematoma that I guess will never go away it's just a very hard place right underneath where the scar is about that big now you can't have a mammogram the first year uh, they advise against it so this year I think my normal mammograms follow up in August so I will go ahead and have one just to make sure hopefully they'll be able to tell me that everything's good in there but there's a lot of knots and a lot of fibrous things going on in there. So that's just part of it. But it is scary because, you know, you're always told, like, you know, you don't want to have any places, lumps or anything like that inside of your breast. But thankfully, um, everything has healed. Like I said, I do have an inverted nipple now. It's like he cut um, this nipple this size and this one, you know, normal. What my normal, well, not that big, but... Yeah, so you can see a definite difference. Um, she's out. She's ready to play all the time. This one never, ever comes out. So um, I would say it would be concerning if I were a dancer of some sort and I did, you know, show these <laughs> to people. But, you know, realistically, I see them in my husband and that's basically it. So I'm not as concerned about what they look like as they sort of do match now. Um, I did, before I had this done, I had a whole size cut bigger on the right than I did the left. So, you know, and, and everybody does. They, they say that's normal. Most women do have one that's larger, one that's smaller, whatever. They're not twins, right? They're just sisters. <laughs> so, um, but some things that I wish I had done. So one year later, if I were to go back, that's the first thing I would definitely have followed up with wound care and gotten that taken care of. I wish I had taken their, taken, there are vitamins that you can get. And I did get some, but I was about two weeks post-op doing it. I wish I had started taking the surgical and wound vite uh, vitamins. I think they call them wound vite, surgivite, something like that. Um, I wish I had taken those type of things. I didn't know about them until Yota told me about them. But I wish I had started taking them two weeks prior. Um, just so that everything would have healed up, you know, a little better and faster for me. Um, you know, we're over 50 now. I'm over 50, so... <laughs> Things aren't going to bounce back like they should or would in, you know, your 30s and 40s. And I wasn't prepared for that at all. I just wasn't. Um, so I wish I had ordered those vitamins or gone down to, they're very costly. I think they start out at like 40 and go up to like 80 bucks. But it would have been good for me to have started those early on, you know, before pre-surgery. So I did anyway, and I think... Um, you know, I can't second guess, but I think it would have been a better healing type situation for me had I done it. But he just really gnarled this. I, th I feel like he had some issues. He just didn't tell me about them. But what are you going to do? That, you know, check your doctors thoroughly. Go to several. I went to two and was happy with the second one. Um, so maybe next time I might have gone searching a little more and taken some more advice from people. I know some of my friends that have had it done drove clear down to Knoxville. I just, I would have done that. Knoxville's about a two hour drive for me. The thing about going to Knoxville is I can't imagine being in that much pain and driving in a car, jostling. Mm -mm. Like I, mm -mm. I would have had to have stayed down there for three or four weeks and that just wasn't an option. So 
I, I did find someone in my town, thought he was great, and I still probably think he's okay. I just, I'm second guessing, like, what about this one? Um, so let's see, the vitamins I would have done, um, I would have bought one of those. I'm still saying this, guys. I recommend if you're going to have it done, buying one of those prop up. It kind of looks like a chair pillow with the arms and put that into sleep on. Or if you had a lazy boy, unfortunately, we got rid of ours. Thank you. <laughs> Years ago, Bill is still trying to get me to get another recliner. I do not want one. But anyhow, if you have a recliner, it would be great to sleep in that or to buy one of those pillows that looks like a chair and prop yourself up because that's what you need to do for several weeks. To me, I had to. Um, I would have eaten more protein. I feel like my diet wasn't the best, and uh, I, it's still not. But at the time, you know, they did tell tell me, like, you should probably eat more protein. Try not to eat a whole lot of junk. Well, I wanted comfort because I was in pain. I was upset. I was not healing right. You know, I'd just come through that horrible surgery. So I wanted junk food, and I ate junk food. And I feel like if you tightened up your diet a little bit and maybe ate a little more protein, uh, hydrated a little better. I could have done that as well. I wish I had done that too. Um, walking even, and I did do some pacing around, but even if you can't go outside to walk, walk down your driveway, walk inside of your house down a hallway, pace back and forth in your room. Some form of exercise does promote the healing and it does help. So, these are some things that I didn't do, but if you are getting ready to have one, um, a breast reduction surgery or any type of, you know, cosmetic surgery like that, I would recommend those things because I feel like I would have had an, a much easier time. Um, so if you are getting the insurance, insurance covered mine, but not 100%. We are in the U.S. Insurance is crazy, and I feel like I have really good insurance. Um who has good insurance anymore in the U.S. But anyhow, um, I had to come out of my pocket anywhere, somewhere between $2,000 to $2,500. You know, you pay your doctor. That's one bill. Uh, insurance pays, and you pay the copay, right? You pay the surgical center or hospital. You have an anesthesiologist. You have meds, the pharmaceuticals that you have to take, and you have bras and stuff that you have to buy. So, when all was said and done, um, I, if I were doing it again, I would have saved a little more money. Um, yeah, so definitely keep that in mind if you're going to do it. It it will cost you some money if you're in the U.S. Uh, unless you just have some kind of great insurance better than mine, then girl, I don't know what to tell you. But I had it done at the first year, so my deductible needed met and all that. So anyway, I would save about $2,500 just to be on the safe side. You, you may not need it, but it's better to have it than, you know what I mean? Um, and one more thing that I really wish I had done a better job at was slathering the coconut oil. They tell you to um, use an antibiotic ointment or coconut oil because the healing properties of coconut oil is very antiseptic, I guess, is, or is that what I'm trying to say, or antibiotic acting? Um, it, it helps with infection, and if I'm being honest, I can remember back, I just didn't want to change the dressings as often. I took a shower every day, my husband helped me, and then we put a lot of the cream and ointments on, but I wish I had done that two to three times a day with coconut oil. Um, now all I use on them, on my scars, what's left, is coconut oil and I have done and I feel like that's why this one did so well um, I put coconut oil I put that on everything <laughs> I really do um, and it's all good to, uh, I'm kidding I'm kidding but anyhow yeah girl uh, coconut oil slather those puppies with the coconut oil also I did invest in um, a red light therapy unit one of those um, I know you've seen them. Red light it's supposed to promote uh, healing. And I did use that post-op probably six to eight weeks. I need to keep using it because they say it's good for all your skin, wrinkles, scarring, promotes that. They even say that it's good to burn 
fat away I don't know I need to try it though girl but um, I did buy that from Amazon I hopefully can find it again and link it for you I bought a cheaper unit probably about that big so um, that is something to keep in mind if you want to promote health and you can use it afterwards I've just been really lazy so there we go that is and so I'm doing great I would do it again I would do it all over again I would not, however, opt to have an additional, I, I just don't think I would, um, like a liposuction followed by a tummy tuck. I mean, no, I, I wouldn't, and, and that would be great. I would love to have something, you know, suck the fat out and, you know, take it off, but eh, uh -uh. after this surgery, no, ma'am, she wouldn't do it. She would not do it. Hopefully that gave you guys some insight as to how I'm doing a year later, um, some things to watch out for, some things to prepare for if you are going into it. Please feel free to either email me or comment down below and ask me anything. I'll tell you my experience. Hopefully I've covered the high spots on that, but anyhow, let me know your feelings. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I'll, I will see you back here on um, Saturday with an unboxing of jewelry. <gasps> yes, and a small, tiny Louis Vuitton handbag. So there you go. Oh, before I let you go, handbag of the day, of course, is this little puppy. Thank you to Gwenny for buying me this puff. I love it. I love it. Um... Scent of the day is this Bond number no. nine. It is called New Bond Street. It is a gourmand scent. I love it. I don't usually do a whole lot of gourmands, but girl, this smells like the notes in it are, are not what I'm getting. It smells like cocoa and vanilla. Kind of had a baby and slathered, it, slathered itself all over your body in a good way. <laughs> It kind of gives me like candy vibes too. I don't know. It's good. It is really good. So anyway, that is my scent of the day. Guys, thanks again. And remember, if y'all see my husband though, girl, don't tell him nothing. Bye. You know what I needed to tell you guys? So here's my picture. <laughs> Um, when I had the surgery done or when I finally did the video for you guys. Uh, this is almost exactly one year ago. I started, and this is the only reason in the world, when I got my breast taken off, um, I could then see this area of my body in a big way. Like, think about it. For years and years, I had cans that came down to here, girl. I did not see all of this on me down to way down here, okay? After I had my boobs taken off, my breast reduction, girl, oh my gosh. Every time I look down, all I can see is a big fat roll. <gasps> What? So I did start on a journey of weight loss, working out, getting more fit, eating better. Um, it has been a struggle though. I lost a few pounds. Um, hopefully you can see the difference, but sometimes I think, is it just because I got a better haircut? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've lost all that much scale weight. I don't feel like it, but I have gotten stronger and, um, I've done some more exercise, so I'm more fit than I was in this picture, but <sighs> she's got to work, girl. Ooh, yes. It's all about them titties today, girl. Yes, Bianchi, yes!